What's up YouTube, Ronix from Ronix Photography and today welcome here to another retouching video and today we are going to be doing editing of a natural light photo like this specific image and we are going to try to mimic, we are going to try editing like Irene Rudnick so this is the photo we are going to do as you can see and notice in usually her photos she usually turns her greens to kind of blue yeah so we are going to try to go in for that look so let me kick into this tutorial and if you haven't subscribed kindly hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to hit the notifications bell when you subscribe so this is the, the photo we are going to be retouching and this was a raw image taken by Canon 6D and it was taken at f2.2 at 1 out of 200 of a second and ISO 100 it was taken using an 85 millimeter 1.8 so this is the image so usually i'm going to start by doing my basic adjustments so i prefer to pull down my highlights and my whites down so negative 36 so i will add in a little bit of contrast 8 so i'm going to pull down my blacks a little bit as you can see this is the image and i'm going to pull up my shadows a little bit I'm going to add in a little bit of contrast I'm going to leave it at 8 so I'm going to come right down to my vibrance and I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance to this image so this is the photo right now so I'm going to come back to my blacks I'm going to put it at around 40 so you can see the photo is already looking amazing and has a little bit of contrast in it so what I'm going to do I'm going to come right here I'm going to come to my HSL panel and I'm going to be doing some little little adjustments. So usually I'm going to start with my greens. So I'm going to start with my greens. So I'm going to pull them all the way to 100 to add this bluish kind of feel to the greens. Then I'm going to come to my yellows and I'm going to put it at around 8. Then I'm going to come to my saturation. I'm going to put this... Yeah, I'm going to pull my yellows to around 28 because I want more of the yellows in this image. 28 will do. Uh, then I'm going to come to my greens and I'm going to reduce them because they are too much saturated. So I'm going to pull it to around negative 60s. Yeah, negative 65 can do for this image. So I'm going to come right now to my luminance. Then I'm going to pull my my greens to negative 74 because I want them to really pop so negative 74 is going to be doing and I'm going to come to my ye to yeah my yellows and I'm going to pull them to around 13 so this is our image right now so what I'm going to do before I can open the image in photoshop i'm going to come right to my split toning no i'm going to come to first of all my camera calibration i'm going to pull this to around eight then i'm going to pull my hues to around five so right now i'm going to come to my effects panel and i'm going to pull my dehaze to around eight per eight then I'm going to add a little vignetting to this image because I want the image to be the really focus, the emphasis. So you can see all usually her photos have this vignetting if you notice. So I'm going to open the image in Photoshop. So as it is loading, if you haven't subscribed, kindly subscribe to this channel. You don't forget to hit the notifications bell. So that you don't miss out on new videos so we are going to be retouching this image and before we can retouch the image usually she crops her images in a ratio of four by five so i'll come right here click crop then the ratio four by five yeah for instagram so you can see this is the image right now so this this is fine this is fine for our image and first of all, I'm going to start by duplicating the background layer, clicking Ctrl J on the keyboard, Ctrl J. 
so this is the image and we are going to be doing the coloring of this image and we are going to be doing some little frequent separation and some little dodge and burn so this is the image right now so i'm going to first of all zoom in the image as you can see uh the model really had the perfect skin i should say and let let, let me first clear some some simple blemishes on the skin so mm -hmm. let, let me zoom in let me zoom in this image so i'm going to start removing these simple simple blemishes in the photo so this is the image right now so what i'm doing i'm removing these simple simple blemishes and you can see the skin was really really flawless so and she did not do so much makeup on herself so yeah i think this is really really good so let me try removing these lines in the neck area so yeah so i think that is fine we have something right here let me remove that then i try clearing some of these little little spots on the arm so so for my frequency separation we are going to be using a mixture brush tool and if you don't have the frequency separation action you can check out my previous videos for the action so right now i'm going to start playing the frequency separation action so right here click on it and i'm going to play it so it is going to run usually for my radius i prefer using 10 because i want to retain so so much detail in this image so yeah i'll click continue so this is the image right now i'm going to open the frequency separation i'm going to select my lower lower frequency and i'm going to get my mixture brush tool and if you don't have it just right click on your brushes and you look for mixer brush make sure it is clean then wetness is at 10 the load is 75 mix at 90 and the flow at 100 percent so make sure sample all layers is not checked so you're going to be doing the mixing on the skin so i'm going to zoom in all the way because it is not a close-up photo and when you're mixing make sure you mix the highlights alone and the shadows alone so when we are mixing we are trying to blend the areas with uneven skin tones together yeah that's generally what we are doing and the advantage of using a mixture brush tool you retain so so much detail in your images so this is the photo right now as you can see you don't have to overdo the mixing make sure you don't overdo it because you'll end up looking like a doll or a robot so let me show you guys the before after before after you can see the difference it is making so the advantage of using make sure you edit while you're zooming in and zooming out so this is the image so we're going to come to the neck area we mix we are trying to blend the skin tones together so yeah so i'm going to come right here you see i'm mixing this highlight alone and yeah, I'm trying to mix this other area alone and for increasing your brush size use the brackets on your keyboard so the left and the right bracket sorry so this is the image so I'm going to come back to the neck area and I try to mix there so you can see we have a highlight then the mid tone somewhere then this area kind of has shadows yeah so this is we are doing frequency separation and we really want to retain so so much detail in this image let me show you the before after before after it is really really subtle and we are not going to overdo this so this is the image right now so let me let me zoom i show you guys how far we have come before after before after you can see the changes right here so after i'm um, i think i'm done with the frequency separation so i'm going to come right 
I'm going to start be uh, doing my dodging and burning. And before I can do that, let me first color grade this image. So I'm going to come right here and I'm going to use selective color first. I prefer adding some science to the image, negative 10. Yeah, so right now we are trying to edit like Irene Rudnick, but this is my idea for my portraits usually. So I'm going to add in a little bit of yellows to my reds. Yeah, so usually I'm done with the selective color and I'm going to come to my gradient map. And if you don't, just click right here. And if you don't have all these palettes, make sure you click on this gear like icon, click photographic toning and click append, you'll get all these. So usually I, pr I prefer using gold one and gold two. So I click OK. So I come to my blending options and for my blending, I prefer using soft light because it, re it reveals everything in this image. So. I'm going to come right down to my opacity and I'm going, since the image is looking too yellow, I'm going to reduce the opacity of this image so you can see how it is looking, it really looks nice and amazing. So I'm going to come right now back to my gradients, click on the color and I'm going to click gold to this time because I prefer that golden feel to the image and still i'm going to select soft light and i'm going to come right to my opacity and i'm going to reduce my opacity somehow so this is the image right now so let me put all our color grading in a group select then ctrl g on the keyboard so i'm going to click color grade so this is the before color grading and this is the after before after you can see the difference it has brought to this image so right now what i'm going to do i'm going to come back and i'm going to do some little dodging and burning to this image so i'm going to come to right here i click curves so first of all i'm going to brighten it up a little bit uh click make sure white is selected ctrl i on the keyboard to invert then make sure this is dodge so we dodge the highlights and we burn the shadows so what this does it kind of emphasizes the highlights and the shadows in the image since frequency separation kind of flattens the image so i'm going to darken this time so i'm going to make sure white is selected control click control i on the keyboard command i for mark then i'm going to name this burn so i'm going to close this I'm going to select all these, put them in a group, Ctrl G, and I'm going to rename this Dodge and Burn. D N B, yeah, for Dodge and Burn. So I'm going to open this. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to make sure the upper layer is selected, and I'm going to put a black and white layer on top of this, on top of the burn because i want something to guide us when we are doing the dodging and burning so i'm going to click black and white so i'm going to pull down the reds as you can see when you pull the reds down it emphasizes the shadows more so i'm going to pull this up a little bit so i'm going to come right here i select my brush tool make sure it is normal opacity at 100 and the flow when i'm doing my dodging the flow is at 14 percent so i'm going to come to my and make sure it is a soft brush guys so click on my dodge layer and i'm going to start dodging my 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 highlights so when you're dodging you, you dodge the highlights and when you're burning you burn the shadows so this is do that we have a highlight right here we dodge that so I'm going to zoom in and make sure when you're doing your dodging and burning, you don't zoom in completely because you may make mistakes you may not notice and you may realize after wasting your time doing the process. So I'm going to reduce the brush using the brackets on the keyboard. So I'm going to dodge there. We have a highlight on the nose bridge. We have a highlight right here. Then I'm going to come to the head area. We have a highlight. So 
so the highlight there too so on the chin area too we have some little highlight to show emphasize that so you guys may be wondering what i may do, be doing let me turn off my black and white chart you guys can see what we have done so far so before after before after it is really really subtle and the the results are there so select my band turn on my my black and white layer but this time when i'm burning i prefer to pull down my flow to around eight percent so i'm going to, to be doing my my burning so we burn the shadows so you can see we have a shadow right here on the neck area we have a shadow i'm going to emphasize the cheekbone yeah so this is the image and we shouldn't overdo this by the way guys so i'm going to turn off my black and white so before after before after you can see the difference dodging and burning really brings to the image so what i'm going to do i'm going to add in a little little red fill to this image so i'm going to come right here and i'm going to select my selective color i'm going to add in a little bit of science negative three and some little bit of magentas to this image as you can see this is our image and yeah i think we are done so let me put everything in a group Ctrl G on the keyboard so this is the before this was our image right right from camera row and we have done the little bit of adjustments and yeah we are trying to edit like Irene does Irene Rudnick you guys can check her out on YouTube and usually for her photos she prefers to add to change the greens to some of blues but still the images can be popping so this is how she edits her natural light photos so uh this was the image right from camera row so right here we did the frequency separation color grading and we did some dodging and burning to this photo so guys if you love this video kindly hit the like